All right, good evening, and um, thanks for clicking on to the Global Weather and Climate Report, edition 29. And, uh, you know, the very first edition, it was all about record-breaking heat back in June. Um, anything but that this morning, we had, um, you know, 80-mile-an-hour winds, record-breaking winds um, across parts of northern portions of Scotland yesterday morning, and 24 hours later, we're in blizzard conditions near enough. This was the scene this morning captured by myself on the A9 and very extreme conditions at times this morning, uh, making for some pretty interesting dr driving, that's for sure. So yesterday morning, it was all about getting pelted by branches coming off trees, whipped by 80 plus mile an hour winds. And the early hours of this morning was all about um, wind driven snow and uh, a white A9. But certainly there has been a lot of uh, interest in the weather around the planet over the last few days in particular we have seen parts of the world seeing record breaking uh, warm conditions we'll look at that but also very interestingly we had of course storm Otto, and uh, this was a very interesting video captured on the on the uh, north sea a fishing vessel and that is almost enough to make you feel sick just looking at it so, of course, exceptional sea conditions, and certainly I would not like to be on that vessel. Look at the angle in which that that fishing vessel is getting bounced around, just like a toy in a bath. Uh, so, amazing stuff, actually, offshore, as well as the winds that we've seen onshore. So, that was uh, out at sea, and of course, we had... Uh, some very powerful wind gusts, um, actual unofficial, and I, I say unofficial because it's not a Met Office station, but this is Invergordon uh, down at the shoreline here along the Cromarty Firth, and this particular station, albeit exposed, recorded a wind gust in excess of 101 miles per hour at the uh, the lifeboat station. So. Pretty pretty impressive stuff, if I'm being honest. There's unofficial stations uh, in Orkney recorded um, a wind gust around 100 miles an hour. I do know that the official wind gust, I believe, was 120 on top of Cairngorm Summit, which I'm not entirely surprised at, to be honest with you. But one thing I did find quite surprising, this was in my own back garden, um, this little trestle, uh, trellis, sorry, um, was blown to bits by the wind. Actually, if you notice here in this particular image, it's actually, well, practically, I know it's not particularly deep in the ground, but actually lifted out of the ground. So it shows you how strong the winds were even here. My, my wind gauge actually on my weather station blew off at a wind gust of 48 miles an hour. I was pretty good at that. Actually, I managed to retrieve it. It was actually lying in the back garden. But, uh, I was pretty good at actually when it, it blew off and it stopped recording the wind speed. But uh, at 48 miles an hour, it, it did come off. Um, but I've managed, to, I've managed to find it. But I do know that some of the wind, well, just down the road at Invergordon, um, 100 miles an hour. So I'd be curious to find out exactly how, how strong the winds were even here at the house. But also what's quite interesting is um, Tain recorded a wind gust of 81 miles an hour. Now, I didn't realise this, but that station has been in existence since 1992. But that wind, 81 mile an hour wind gust actually was the second strongest wind gust recorded at that particular station. Um, and it was only surpassed by a wind gust of one mile per hour stronger than that on the 9th of January 2015. So it's quite interesting actually how the station Tain was one of the strongest wind gusts. I believe um, in Berberve was slightly stronger, 84 miles an hour, but Tain being the strongest low-level wind gust was actually quite interesting. And I do believe a lot of that was to do with winds accelerating over the northwest highlands uh, off these mountains and down into this rather open, exposed area. Now, I know it's an exposed area, but I think that there was an element of the winds crossing over the mountains and actually accelerating as they descended the hills. 
So I think that that may have played a role, but it's unusual actually to have Tain as the strongest wind gust. I would understand it more if it was a northeasterly wind and it's coming straight off the North Sea. But in fact, it was coming in from a more northwesterly direction off land, which um, I, I, I personally think it's a little bit more unusual, but I could be mistaken there. So, yeah, interesting, of course, with Storm Otto. Um, big hits on the, on the Danish coast as well, probably the Netherlands also. But this is the GFS um, two-meter temperature normally for today. So you can see here some areas of extreme warmth, including the UK, by the way, Ireland, England, Wales. Um, seeing, despite the fact that we've got reasonably cold temperatures across the north, we'll have a look at the UK temperatures in Europe in just a second. But in terms of average very warm compared to normal across Europe, if you notice here. Very cold across northern North America, if you notice Canada, well below normal parts of Greenland. As well as that, we've got some record-breaking cold in Argentina, for example. We'll also look at that in just a second. Also, northeastern portions of uh, Siberia, below normal. But we've got some incredible warmth, as well as incredible cold uh, to speak about around the world at the moment here. This is the February two minute temperature anomaly is here for the month to date. And you can see here, um, I believe firmly driven by the Manjulian Oscillation as well as other aspects, WPO, EPO, the PNA, um, having a role in terms of, of, of providing a pre predominantly warm mid-latitude pattern at the moment here. And of course, with uh, when you look at the, the whole month, Cold across Africa, cold across uh, southeastern portions of Europe, northern Europe, very warm, uh, a bit of a back and forth in between across central Europe. We've got very, very warm conditions, if you notice here, across most of Russia, with the exceptions of the northeast. China has been very warm after some record breaking cold. Parts of India, cold. Australia, very cold. Uh, northern portions of Canada has been very cold. Parts of Alaska, very cold also, which is quite interesting. And a large swathe of Greenland with that positive NAO. Um, we've got a pretty cold Greenland, warm across the UK and Ireland, of course, as you're well aware of. And I do believe it's down to the Julian Oscillation rotating, stuck in three, then it's slowly creeping through four, five and six, keeping that warm theme. And I think with that storm that we just got uh, hit by, I think, it, you know, with the, the progression into uh, phase seven, probably helped that kind of deflation of the high over the UK and Ireland enough to allow that system to ride into the northern half of the British Isles, providing what was arguably the strongest event of the season in terms of storminess. But we have still yet to see uh, a named storm in the UK. I know Storm Auto was named, but it was, of course, by the Danish Met Service. Um, so um, officially, it's not been there's there's not been a name storm yet yet mentioned by the Met Office. So let's have a look at the finer details here, looking at the the extremes around the world for the last few days here. So this is a uh, of uh, extreme temperatures around the world. Maximiliano Herrera, uh, scorching heat in South East East Asia with temperatures of thirty nine Celsius in Thailand, Southwest China also boiling with maximum temperatures above 35 Celsius today. This is the 12th of February. And we had multiple regions of 34, 35 degrees in parts of China. Bearing in mind that it is, of course, winter uh, in this part of the world. And we also had an historic temperature in Taiwan, 35.2 Celsius, um, or 30, sorry, uh, 36.3 Celsius destroys the previous Taiwan record of 35.2 set all the way back in, on the 24th of February, 1942. So that's gone back quite a long time, actually, isn't it? Uh, we do have um, some um, incredible, this is quite interesting, actually, because we've had incredible extremes of back and forward, especially over South America. So incredible record heat in Argentina and Uruguay. Monthly records were achieved. In both countries, temperatures as high as 40.4 Celsius, as you can see here in Montevideo. Um, and then we skip through to um, Terry Goose, minus 56.9 at Dome Fuji, the station, a Japanese uh, station based in Argentina. This is the, the lowest temperature in the, in the Southern Hemisphere. So that is now 
the case where we're starting to see temperatures in the southern hemisphere surpass those of the northern hemisphere, uh, which is quite interesting. So, of course, we've surpassed the warmest time of the year now in the south, in the southern hemisphere, and the temperatures over the vast Antarctic ice cap is going to start to lower as the sun becomes weaker and weaker. Uh, interesting across Japan, Hokkaido temperatures down to minus thirty two point five Celsius, and uh, only one point one above the monthly record set back in nineteen seventy eight. We've also seen big extremes, not just in South America, but also of course across uh, China, Japan, the Koreas, uh, going from extreme cold to extreme heat, and then back to extreme cold. It's it's just incredible how much the, the fluctuation in the temperature pendulum this winter has been, uh, like I say, from extreme heat, extreme cold, and all points in between here. So we're bouncing from one extreme to another um, this winter, and we've also got incredible snow depths of upwards of 394 centimetres, which is a maximum depth uh, so far this winter for any JMA station. Uh, so just absolutely stunning scenes here of, of remarkably deep co uh, snow, bitterly cold temperatures in the mountains as well. Just look at the, the depth of that. Wouldn't that be just amazing to, to have on your doorstep, I must admit. Um, so yeah, amazing stuff actually. Um, looking at, uh, again, extreme heat. Parts of India has been seeing very, very hot conditions. Early in the season, of course, you would gradually start to see the temperatures rise in March, April, May, and then, of course, ahead of the, the monsoon season in the summertime, that's when you peak the heat. Uh, so we've got these big uh, extremes, like I say. Temperatures, um, th this is an interesting one here. Uh, Rik Rikibutsu, um, Rikibutsu, I think that's the right pronunciation, probably wrong. Coldest place in Japan saw a huge warm up today. So within you know twelve hour period, temperature difference between AM and PM was twenty eight Celsius. What a diurnal fluctuation that is! The temperature rose from minus thirty at seven AM to minus two at two PM. So remarkable rise in temperature at this one particular station in uh, in Japan. Uh, looking at uh, some remarkable warmth even in Canada, 16.6 Celsius was achieved yesterday in Ontario. Uh, and of course, remember, what was it last weekend or the weekend before we are talking about, you know, the coldest temperatures since the 90s, even since earlier than that. So, like I say, these wild swings back and forth in terms of the temperature has been very, very notable this, uh, this winter season. And again, more... Um, fluctuations around, seeing temperatures down as low as minus 23 Celsius, uh, big snows in the mountains of British Columbia, and uh, we've got, uh, this is an interesting one here, finally, in Argentina, so remember I showed you the temperatures of, of 40 Celsius in parts of Argentina, temperatures down to 7.9 Celsius at Buenos Aires, uh, the Argentinian capital. This is the coldest minimum temperature in February since 1951. So that is uh, quite interesting, actually, um, to, to, to think about also. So, yeah, very interesting um, weather around the world for the past few days. And uh, I think I've, I've kind of tried to get these, these global weather and climate reports as a kind of weekly thing. Uh, before it was kind of random, but I'm, I'm trying to make it where it's kind of looking back, you know, during a week, a weekend, whether it be Saturday or Sunday, and looking back at the extremes around the world of the past week. So I suppose that's what I'm kind of aiming for as a kind of weekly thing in these weather reports here. Uh, the Arctic Oscillation actually is still not projected to go much in the, in the way of negative, which is quite interesting given the stratospheric warming situation, but I think it will start to trend more negative. Look at this here, the NAO. So that is interesting how it's now starting to pick up on that negative here showing up. In tomorrow's video, I will look at the upcoming week because there are some very interesting model runs uh, looking at the end of next week. So stay tuned. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Plenty of things going on. We've got a stratospheric warming. 
and I think interesting times to come. Bye for now. Thanks for